Duties to clients covers these five standards. Standard 3A, loyalty, prudence, and care. Members and candidates have a duty of loyalty to their clients and must act with reasonable care and exercise prudent judgment. Members and candidates must act for the benefit of their clients and place their clients' interests before their employers or their own interests. This is an important standard and it places the client before even the employer. So let's just understand the order over here. Let's say you are an let's say you are an investment advisor and you work for a particular brokerage firm. What you need to do is place the client's interests first. After the client's interests come the interests of the employer and then your own interests. So the client comes first. The only exception has to do with integrity of capital markets, which was the earlier standard we talked about. The only time that you might compromise your client's interests if there is a conflict with the integrity of capital markets, which means that if the client is expecting you to do something that is not right, something that might compromise the integrity of capital markets, then obviously you do not need to follow what the client is saying. When discussing standard 3A, it's also important to understand the meaning of the term prudence. Prudence requires caution and discretion. One simple way of putting it is that when you are advising a client or acting on behalf of the client, you need to treat the client's funds the way you would treat your own. That is the most simple way of putting it. But if we get a little deeper, we also need to understand the client's circumstances. So we have to put ourselves in the client's shoes, understand the risk and return requirements for our client, and then make decisions or make recommendations based on the situation. At times, we might be following a particular investment mandate in that case, prudence would mean following or diligently following the mandate. Let's now look at various elements under guidance. The first one is understanding applicability of loyalty, prudence and care. There is a very simple point to be made over here. Investment advisors will find themselves in different job roles and then obviously the job descriptions will be different. It is possible that in certain situations an investment advisor or a portfolio manager has fiduciary responsibility. With fiduciary responsibility, there will be some legal requirements and obviously fiduciary responsibility also comes with a higher level of trust. There will also be situations where an investment advisor or an investment manager might not have fiduciary responsibility. But even if he or she does not have fiduciary responsibility, this standard still applies in the sense that the investment advisor needs to be loyal, needs to be prudent and needs to be extremely careful in managing the funds of the client or in giving advice to the client. Next point has to do with identifying the actual investment client. Standard 3A is about being loyal to your client so the first step is to understand who your client is. Often this will be relatively easy. If you've been hired by a wealthy individual to manage his money, then obviously the client is that wealthy individual. But it is not always that easy to define the client. Let's take another situation where you've been hired by a large company to manage the pension fund. So you've been hired by the company and you are managing this fund. Who is your client? And in other words, who must you be loyal 
2. At first glance, it might appear that since the company has hired you, the company is your client. But in this context, that is not true. Your client consists of all the employees for whom this pension fund is being run. So you need to understand the mandate of this pension fund and you need to be loyal to all those who will ultimately benefit from the pension fund. Another scenario is where you are managing, let's say, a large cap equity fund and that fund has a particular benchmark. Let's say that the benchmark that it's compared against is the S&P 500. Several people might be investing in that fund. Your client is not any one individual. So what your responsibility is in this context is to follow the mandate of the fund. In other words, whatever the prospectus says about that particular fund, that is what you need to follow. So simplistically put, you need to be loyal to the mandate. Developing the client's portfolio. In doing so, you must follow the guidelines given by the client. If let's say an IPS has been defined, then your responsibility is to follow what is documented in the IPS. Furthermore, in creating the portfolio, one needs to take a portfolio perspective. This means that each investment needs to be evaluated in terms of the impact that it will have on the overall portfolio. Also, as investment advisors, we need to consider tax implications and any other constraints that the client has identified. Next, we come to soft commission policies. To understand this concept, let's consider the following scenario. You are an investment manager. You get money from your client and you use the services of a broker to invest this money. Since you are using this broker, the broker obviously needs to be paid a brokerage fee. That brokerage fee also comes from the client. The client might not know which particular broker or brokerage firm you are using. Let's say that from this particular broker, you get research reports. Note that you are getting these research reports from the broker because of the brokerage or the commissions that you are paying the broker. The brokerage commission though is coming from the client. It's the client's money. So anything that you get from the broker, such as the research report, really should benefit the client. If that is not happening, then we have a conflict and it is your responsibility to inform the client of this conflict and be clear about how this conflict is being handled. If you do not do that, then we have a violation of standard 3A. Another scenario is that you have a choice of selecting a broker out of several different brokers. It is your responsibility to provide best execution, which means that you should pick a broker such that the overall cost, this includes both implicit and explicit costs, should be minimized. A detailed discussion of implicit and explicit takes place at level three. For now, it is enough to say that you need to select a broker such that the overall cost for the client is minimized. There might be another situation that you need to be aware of. Sometimes the client might tell you to use a particular broker. This is called a directed brokerage situation. Since the money to pay the broker is coming from the client, there is nothing wrong with directed brokerage. But you still have a responsibility. Let's say the client tells you to go to broker number two and you believe that broker number two is not providing the best execution to the client. It is your responsibility to inform the client 
and then if the client insists on using that broker that is okay then you are supposed to use that broker because again the client brokerage is the clients so ultimately the client can decide how to spend his money next we come to proxy voting policies to understand this let's say that you are an investment manager again and on behalf of your client you've purchased 1 million shares in general electric this means that your client can vote based on those 1 million shares but since you are managing the 1 million shares you can vote on behalf of the client when we talk about proxy voting policies basically that is your policy or your firm's policy with regards to voting it is not necessary that every time there is a vote you vote on behalf of the client because if you do a cost benefit analysis at times it will not be worth putting the effort into voting however when you believe that it does make sense to vote because there will be a benefit to the client then you should go ahead and vote having said that the point here is that whatever the policy is of your firm with regards to proxy voting that policy needs to be very clearly communicated to the client we now come to recommended procedures for compliance you as an investment manager should regularly share account information with your clients and regular means at least every quarter account information should include all the holdings and all the transactions that took place during the quarter client approval if you need to take an action about which there is any doubt as to whether or not the client will approve or whether or not it follows the mandate of the client then you should get the client's approval before proceeding we also have a long list of policies for the firm here where possible you should encourage the firm to have these policies and at least at an individual capacity you should be following these policies most of them are fairly self evident you should encourage the firm to follow all applicable rules and laws and obviously you yourself should do that establish the investment objectives of clients consider all the information when taking actions obviously this is all information related to the client so you need to understand the client's risk profile the client's return requirements the client's constraints and so on when making investment decisions you need to make sure that the portfolio is well diversified you need to carry out regular reviews with the client because your client's circumstances might change you need to deal fairly with all clients with respect to investment actions if there are any possible conflicts of interest then these conflicts need to be disclosed to the client related to that is compensation arrangements what your firm needs to do is disclose to the client any compensation arrangement that the managers have so if a manager is being compensated based on the returns that the client is receiving then obviously the client needs to know that maintain confidentiality this connects with something we've discussed earlier the confidentiality of the client needs to be maintained we have covered the main points related to standard 3a now work through the examples 3b fair dealing members and candidates must deal fairly and objectively with all clients when providing investment analysis making investment recommendations taking investment action or engaging in other professional activities note that this standard talks about fair dealing and the fact that you must deal fairly and objectively with all clients the term equally is not used the reason is that different clients will have different circumstances so it does not make sense to deal in exactly the same way with every client the other related point is that your firm might offer different levels of service 
and some clients might pay more for personalized service. If a client is paying more for personalized service, then obviously it makes sense to offer a higher level of service to that particular client. In terms of guidance, there are two dimensions. One has to do with investment recommendations and the other with investment action. Let's say that you are a sell side research analyst working at a brokerage firm. You create research reports in which you make buy, sell and hold recommendations of related to various stocks. So what are the guidelines that you need to be aware of? The main point is that you need to disseminate information in such a manner that all your clients have a fair opportunity to act on your recommendations. In other words, it would not be correct if some clients who happen to be your most favorite or your largest clients get your recommendations before smaller clients. So an important point is that all clients large and small should have an opportunity to act on the information in a timely manner. Still on investment recommendations, it is important to keep in mind that there will be times when you change your recommendations. So let's say that you originally had a buy recommendation on a particular stock and now you've changed your recommendation to sell. You need to be aware of those who might have acted on your previous information and they should obviously receive the updated information. Also, if a client comes to you after your sell recommendation has been issued and wants to buy more shares, then it is your responsibility to inform the client that your recommendation has changed. And if the client still wants to buy, then you can go ahead and help the client buy more shares. Coming now to investment action. Now let's say that you are a portfolio manager and you are actually purchasing shares for your client. The basic idea is that you should treat all your clients fairly given their investment objectives and circumstances. For example, when making investments in new offerings or in secondary offerings, you should distribute the shares to all customers for whom this particular investment is appropriate and you need to be following a method which is consistent with the policy of your firm. If necessary, you should also allocate shares to your clients on a pro rata basis. There are a few more points to keep in mind here. Let's say that you have multiple clients and one of the clients happens to be a family member who is a regular fee paying client. When you are making allocations, this family member needs to be treated fairly like any other client. The reason is that the family member is also paying the fee just like any other client. You should disclose to your clients and prospective clients the documented allocation procedures of your firm. This disclosure should be clear and complete. And if the client has any questions about the procedure, then you should make those points clear to your clients and potential clients. When coming up with fair dealing compliance procedures, we should keep the following in mind. Number one, limit the number of people involved. And this is fairly obvious. Let's say that there is a committee involved that researches a given set of stocks. If there are lots of people involved in the process, then let's say that this committee is discussing a situation where the recommendation is changing from a buy to a sell. With lots of people involved, it is possible that somebody on this group will disseminate the information before the formal release. Second point is to shorten the time frame between decision and dissemination. And again, if this time frame is long, 
then the chances are higher that somebody will disseminate the information. On the other hand, if this time frame is very short, then the chances of information being disseminated by somebody in this group would be lower. Firms should publish guidelines for pre-dissemination behavior. For example, a strict policy might be that while a given stock or a given investment is being discussed and a recommendation is being developed, nobody on that committee should talk about that particular investment with anyone else during that time and no one should be taking any investment action. When dissemination is done in the sense that the information is shared with the rest of the world, then it should be simultaneous. In other words, different clients and stakeholders should get the information at the same time. Firms should maintain a list of clients and their holdings. And as discussed earlier, firms should develop and document trade allocation procedures. These procedures should be communicated and shared with clients if requested. Disclose trade allocation procedures. So I already mentioned this. Establish systematic account review. The accounts of the individuals in the firm as well as the accounts of different clients should be evaluated on a periodic basis to ensure that all clients are being treated fairly. As discussed earlier, firms can have different levels of service and these different levels of service need to be clearly defined and disclosed to clients. The clients should then have the option of selecting the level of service that is appropriate for them. Obviously, clients who want a higher level of service will pay more and then they get the level of service corresponding to what they pay for and what they have selected. That is it in terms of standard 3B. Now work through the examples.